dead woman for only $89.99. There's people that are gone too soon and some of them are gorgeous. Are you lonely? Think your soulmate isn't born yet? Maybe she's died already. Well, we have MILFs, GILFs, and pretty young ladies all over 18 consenting to work with us. We're not monsters. Death for us at Summoners, Inc. only means it's harder to travel. How did I end up on this site? <laughs> I don't even know. I woke up one day after a bad hangover of drinking cheap wine alone at home, and uh, it was open on my computer. There was an address and a few vague compliments from so-called former clients. Amazing experience. Carl, 26. Cheaper than pleasing my ex-wife. Marcus, 42. Good to know people are still hot in the afterlife. Ethan, 21. Why am I falling for this bullshit, you ask? Being a lesbian in a small city is hard, especially when you're not feminine enough to attract women that like girly girlfriends, but not masculine enough to be the opposite type. My few girlfriends were from other states, from other countries even, and ended up cheating on me. Long distance relationships with the living aren't working. So why not try the dead? Also, $89.99 is way less than I paid for a plane ticket to watch Leslie Riley kiss her real girlfriend in front of my eyes. Yeah, I was the side chick. <sighs> Best friend my ass. My hotel was non-refundable, you bitch. And I'm bored with my life. I want to do something out of the ordinary. That's how every shitstorm starts, isn't it? The address was in a bigger town, a two-hour drive, and they opened on Saturdays. So I jumped in my old Corolla, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, my only company on the road. It was easy to find the address. Despite not being a big building, the place was brand new and flashy. I parked in a nearby smaller street and entered. I was welcomed by a woman with very red lips and bulky, belaged hair that looked like her name was Shonda and, uh, it really was. Shonda was in her middle 30s and wore a red tailor, the exact tone of her lips, and false Louis Vuittons. She was cheery after seeing me enter. Hi, I'm Shonda. She pointed at the cheap golden name tag. What's your name, dear? Uh, it's Farah. Oh, so you're here to get a girlfriend for yourself? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, if... That's all right, I said, insecure. <laughs> of course it is, silly. So, let me explain. We'll do a match in our database to find the ideal date for you. Your date will be available during 48 hours after her summoning. No need to worry. She'll simply tell you she needs to go and leave, then disappear out of sight. When you come for the next time, oh, and believe me, you will, <laughs> She chuckled. We'll do a new matching. Or you can pay a $29.99 fee to have a specific girl summoned. Now, may I have your credit card? She talked about disrupting the souls of the dead like it was a mere office business. But it was interesting. It was worth it. After paying, I filled a few forms in a tablet. I didn't ask for personal info, such as full name or legal documents. Just your preferences to make sure you're getting a good match. It was pretty much just a personality test. I finished in around 15 minutes, and Shonda said, Great, with a big smile, and asked me to wait. Then typed furiously. The summoning would take 10 minutes. After the appointed time, a girl came from a back door. She was in the middle 20s, like me, and... I'm pretty cute, with shoulder-length brown hair and big, shiny eyes. Hi, Farah! She seemed joyful and kissed me on the cheek. <laughs> Her body felt very solid and warm, which surprised me for some reason. I'm Lisa. What do you want to do together? We were still in time for a late lunch, so I took Lisa to a place I liked. She asked a lot about me, but I'm pretty boring, so I'll spare you the details. We were still in time for a late lunch, so I took Lisa to a place I liked. She asked a lot about me, but I'm pretty boring, so I'll spare you the details. It feels so good to properly eat again, she remarked, biting a huge piece of her burger. 
I had chosen a place with plenty of options and was eating spaghetti a la Putinesca. What do you mean properly eat? I asked. What's the afterlife like? You can't eat? Oh, I can't tell you a lot about it, but you don't need to eat there. Sometimes we eat just because we miss it, but it never tastes as good because it's not exactly real, she explained, her mouth still half full. How's it not real? I mean, if I can ask that, of course. Everything in the afterlife is made of thoughts. You can make things come to existence with your mind, but it's hard. You have to be, let's say, high level, or friends with people that are experienced. It's easier to collectively imagine things like places and stuff, too. I get it. That is so fascinating, I said. I could spend all the time asking her about being dead. I wanted to know how she died, how she lived, everything, but... It seemed too rude, so I could only hope she would spontaneously ask. So I could only hope she would spontaneously talk about it. We talked about a lot of things. She was very nice and, like myself, a Dickens fan. I think that we really connected, and then we shared a dessert by the end of the meal. It felt like I knew Lisa for at least a few weeks. It was hard to guess when she died, because she knew a lot about current subjects. I had to ask how. She smiled. Summons Inc. helps us keep up with everything that is happening, so we can connect better with the living. I can even sing a little bit of a Frank Ocean song, you know? I laughed. <laughs> I hope they pay you well for that. You don't need money in the afterlife, Farah. You need knowledge to create things with your mind. That's all. But they pay me the best thing that I could ask for, being back sometimes. It's good to see the world changing firsthand, and it's nice to meet new people. Afterlife is not too bad, but it can get lonely, and sometimes every day is the same. Didn't it happen when you were alive, too? <laughs> no, dear. I had no time to be bored back then. She simply answered, then grabbed my hand. You're really sweet. Thanks. You, uh, you're sweet, too, I said with a smile. I couldn't stop looking at her hands and wondering how it was possible to make her real, even if only for two days. <laughs> You're wondering what I am right now, aren't you? She openly laughed. <laughs> don't worry, this isn't my first afterlife date. I don't know how I can be like that, but I'm neither a ghost nor a corpse. During the time I'm here, I'm human, like you. Everything went smoothly from then on. I told Lisa about my exes, she told me a little bit about her friends on the other side and how it was preparation to get a living date. For example, you can't learn a language you don't already know unless you study for it for a proper time in the afterlife. It can take as much as you take on Earth, but it usually takes less time because you don't have to waste as much time taking care of your bodily needs. Lisa learned Italian after she died. Have you ever wondered what would happen if someone bad went there to get a date? Like, could they hurt one of you? I asked, suddenly worried. Oh no, the matching process doesn't really depend only on the forms. It's somewhat... Mm, something supernatural? A bad man would be assigned some lady demon that would, well, <laughs> fuck his ass. The method is perfect as far as I know. Well, it seems to be, I said, gently placing a kiss on her lips. She reciprocated. We walked around the city, had a Sunday together, then I drove us back to my place. It's a small, unspecific flat, but she seemed to like it. She's also fascinated by city lights, fairy lights, and lights in general. What a cute girl. Sex was great, and we cuddled and ordered pizza afterwards. I'd say it was a normal date, except it was so much better than my normal dates. She's even-tempered, easy to please, and had the softest skin. It's literally everything I ask for in a woman. I was ready to dismiss everything as an inebriate dream, but when I woke up in the next morning, she was there. I don't think I've ever smiled so wide. It was a good day. She loved watching movies, drinking wine, and turning light switches on and off. I started to make the calculations of how much I would need to summon her every weekend. 
it would be the most solid relationship I've ever had. And maybe if I took a few extra hours of work during the week, I could make it. We were once again lazily snuggling in bed after sex. Nothing more fitting for a rainy Sunday afternoon, and I even asked myself if that's how it feels to be happy. I never had a terrible life, but I only knew what averageness was like. She raised her eyes, and I was shook off from my abstractedness. Was it good? <laughs> you know? Lisa blushed. It was my first time with a woman. A distant siren sounded in my head. I didn't know why, but I ignored it and assured her it was amazing. She explained she signed up for dating girls after repeatedly being requested by the same guy. The first time was fine, but she was getting bored of not meeting new people. Monday came and I called in sick to spend the rest of my time with Lisa at home. I never met someone so fun to be with and so grateful for the small things such as eating and sleeping. You can sleep there, sure, but you never dream, she explained. What's the point, right? I did what I always do in my relationships and rush things. I'm gonna miss you, Lisa. Can, can I request you again? <laughs> well, I think I won't get bored with you, she half smiled. My heart kind of broke for remembering why she stopped dating men. I'm not special for her. It sucks. It really sucks. We were watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine together as we made out and talked, and gotta optimize your time. So she added, You're such a Charles Boyle. I laughed, and then got distracted by my own curiosity. Does Summons Inc. have something from you to summon you? Yes, it makes summoning easier and cheaper. Um, they got it from my grave? You could visit it someday. I barely get visits lately. She sounded a little bit sad. Of course, I, I would love to, I said. Then she told me her full name and the city she was buried in. It was nearby. We spent a little more time together. I grew restless, but did my very best to enjoy every last hour. Well, Farah, it's time. She kissed my nose. I had a great time with you. Thank you so much. Oh, if you see my daughter... Please tell her to visit more. And she quietly walked away. I'd seen her naked body, so I knew she probably had kids, but, you know, it's, it's not really something you talk about when you look at that. Was I in love with a dead girl? Deciding to seize the time I still had that day, I started searching for her. It was easy to find the cemetery, so I drove myself there. After looking for a while, I finally found a beautiful white marble grave. Lisa had been beloved in life. Next to it sat a familiar figure with a posy of yellow roses. The sound of my footsteps might have startled her, and she abruptly turned in my direction. Then her face relaxed in a smile. She'd been crying. Farah, it's so good to see you here. I didn't know you knew where your great-grandmother was buried, said my grandmama. She died young. And now I'm the only daughter left. I actually dreamed of her, I said, my face beat red from the terrible realization. Um, she asked you to visit more? Grandmama was now openly crying, clearly touched. I will, sweetie. It's so good to know. Sometimes I have the feeling that she's still with me. She hugged me very tightly. What were you doing in your dream? I was now crying too, but these were tears of embarrassment. Uh, e e eating a, 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 a pizza. Eating a pizza. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And once again, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching tonight's video, for listening tonight listening to tonight's podcast, or however you've happened to found the Mr. Creepypasta story time. I especially want to give a big shout out to Eric Mary, Trey Smiles, Love Lolly Boy, Ken Lando Higuchi, and Brianna Von Tyne Jansen. I'm pretty sure I butchered your names, but either way, I appreciate you guys being such big supporters on Patreon. If you guys would like to join them, head over to patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, because it helps, you know, 
keep me and my cat fed. <clears throat> Before I go tonight, I also want to tell you guys about a wonderful Kickstarter that's taking place. It's called the All Women Horror Anthology. It's the Daughters of Darkness. It features a whole bunch of authors from No Sleep and, of course, all women, which is pretty fucking cool. Everybody came together to make this anthology. It's 43 horrific tales, and all of the authors are women. They are more than halfway funded. It's still got a little bit left to go, and they have a little bit under a month. So it's one of the guaranteed Kickstarters, I'd like to say. I've already backed it, got myself one of the hardcover books. If you guys would like to be able to back it, there's going to be a link in the description down below. Thanks again, guys, and sweet dreams.